Derek, you've made very clear that you love playing football. Do you like the role of spoiler, or is that something you have to kind of get your head around uh, being in this position? Yeah, I, don't, I haven't really thought about spoiling, just going to play and trying to go win the next game, really. Do you look at, are you conscious of some of the advanced stats like running yards over expected and success rate and stuff like that? No, I don't. Uh-uh, I don't. I think um, one of your answers that after after the game on, on Sunday seemed like maybe it was a little hard to in interpret. Like, like you, a lot of us thought you had said maybe you were at least looking at the end of your tenure here. Was, was that was that accurate or? or um, it was just crazy three games left. The season's almost over. That's what I meant. Um, What's the primary yeah. motivator for you in these last three games? To go win. Um, we got three games left. Uh, Finn the season strong um, all together and try to go 3 and 0 and win these next three. As you, as you see the league kind of change and evolve, especially the running back position, does it bother you that dominant, you know, bell cow running backs like yourself are becoming kind of an endangered species around the league? I don't care. I'm just still be me, play the way I play, um, and try to make an impact as much as I can. Um, until I can't anymore, then that's what it is. Have you been in a setting with, with Earl and, and Eddie before? And what was that like, maybe just that brief moment on Sunday? No, it was cool to uh, get a picture with them and all of us being one place at one time, um, legends of this organization. And it was pretty cool to have that moment. The same thing to you, or what have they been like from a support standpoint, uh, you know, Eddie and, and Earl both? No, I mean, I didn't say too much. Just saying hello. Um, uh, I haven't seen Earl in a while. Um, and, I mean, Eddie, we talked here and there. But it was just cool to be able to have that moment with those two. Is Earl pretty encouraging? I mean, he really didn't say much. It was like a brief moment. Um, just saying hello to one another, and then we uh, took the picture. With, with Seattle obviously coming here, won a big game on Monday, trying to get to the playoffs. What's it like trying to match their intensity on Sunday and how much you try to rally the guys to, to do that? Well, I mean, you know, they're a great team. Um, we got a lot of veterans, savvy defense, get to the ball. Um, I mean, it's football. I think, you know, we all grown men about the whole situation. We got to go out there and try to go win. Nobody's laying down. Let's go out there and play our, play our style of football, try to go get a win. quarterbacks ready in this situation yeah um you know it's it's uh I, I would think it, it would probably be challenging in some in some situations uh for us right now it's not uh ryan's a ryan's a pro pro uh pro is pro excuse me and um you know ever since the move was made he's he's been uh, uh coming in and preparing as if he were still the starter so um you know not much has changed as far as that regard and in and as far as both those two being ready to go uh, making sure they're they're clean with the game plan clean with their responsibilities and their assignments and uh you know we'll, we'll both be ready if if needed uh what do you mean by short Six and under, something like that. Yeah, um, you know, it's probably an area we could be a little bit more efficient on. Uh, tried a couple, a uh, couple of those um, opportunities on Sunday didn't work out so great. Uh, so, um, you know, I've got to, I've got to do a better job of, of being able to uh, get those guys open quicker, uh, in, in, um, so we can become more efficient and stay more efficient uh, in, in, in that type of passing game. Useful alternative when the run game seems like you're banging your head against the wall. Um, maybe. Uh, I mean, there's a lot that goes into to you know calling a run or a pass. You know, what I mean, it's um, there's there's a lot of things that that come into play. Uh, making sure that you're you're continuing to try to put your guys in in the best position uh, to be successful. Not you know obviously for that play, but uh, for the entirety of the game. Um, in, in, you know, trying to take advantage of some of the things and, and that, that the defense is presenting you and also uh, trying to set some things up for later on in the game that, that maybe you have some complimentary plays involved with. So, um, you know, banging your head against the wall, I wouldn't necessarily say that. Would we like to be more efficient um, than we were on Sunday? Absolutely. Like the, the negative yard runs that we had were um, 
not good, and, and it's it's going to be hard to overcome those if you're consistently having you know second and 13, second and 15, because you're you know you're giving up a, a TFL. So we need to do a better job um, of of being more efficient uh, in, in in that area, and you know, and, and just can't have the big misses that we had on on Sunday. Your midweek conversation with Will different on on a week when you're not certain about his status, or what's it like now as far as him being in meetings and talking? yeah, I mean it's the same. It's 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 still making sure that again. Uh, Everybody in that room is is getting every every bit of information they're going to need to go out there and be success, it's successful if if called upon on Sunday. Um, so, you know, again, and and he's in there for every for every meeting, every install, all the conversations. You know, he's included in, in having conversations with him, having conversations with Ryan, all those things. So, uh, you know, not much has changed. He's just probably in the training room a little bit more. In terms of they came on first down, you ran a lot on first down, and you talk about efficiency. How do you balance that? Like, it's time to put that aside. We got to do something different on first down. Yeah, I, you know, I think going back to that that initial answer that I had, um, you know, ru- running a lot. Like, I think we were what fifteen and nine on first down total, right? Um, so yeah, is it is it slightly two of those runs? I think were gadgets, right? Whether it was the wildcat or the reverse. Um, so, so trying, trying again. There, there is a fine line and a fine balance, but uh, especially with the way that we're built, being able to go and make sure that that um, we're able to to continue to set up our our play actions, um, our movements, and and continuing to make sure uh, that not only are we giving Derek opportunities, um, but but again, we're putting everybody on the field in a position to be successful for the entirety of the game. And there were a few times where like, you saw them run blitz, like they were showing that, but then. Will still yeah, that one. He's play. that he's got to make a check on that one. You're talking. You're talking about the one. At, the one after after Traylon's catch. Yeah, That's we got to go. Side. Yeah, like we we got to get out of that play. So uh, some of that's involved in, um, you know, uh, whether whether it's it's you know me having a better design and, and, and giving him better answers or whatever it may be. But yeah, in that one in particular, like we need to go the other way. In terms of his progress, are you confident that if Will has limited or, or no reps this week that he can still go out and execute a game plan? Yeah, I mean, it's it's he's done a great job of being able to go and, and again, continue to put in the work, you know, um, uh, making sure he, he understands what we're getting ready to see, um, you know, what we're expecting and where we're expecting our guys to be. Um, and, and, and again, I think that's just a testament to him and his work ethic and, and the type of type of guy that he is. Change the subject a little bit. Uh, in terms of the way Skaronski and Duncan played on Sunday, what do you say to those guys to kind of reel them back in and, and get them ready for this week? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, show them the things that they did well, show them the things that we need to improve on, and uh, make sure that they understand that we've got another good opponent coming in here and on, you know, however many days from now, three, four days. Um, so it's, it's uh, whether, the, whether, you know, it was a perceived great game or perceived, you know, not so good game, whatever it may be. Like we got another opponent coming in the game, so we got to make sure that we're able to to make make the strides and make the corrections and and improve on the things that we did well on. Continue to enhance those and and get ready to go play another uh, team here in a few days. Well, I'll say that for the game, that uh, there are a couple times maybe that he might have stepped into a sack or two. Do you think that that might have been the case? And, and what can you tell a young quarterback? In yeah, that uh, and, and really. Um, it's going to come down to, to us being able to show them, like, hey, uh, you know, whether whether you're drifting here, whether you're drifting there, you know, you're clean here on this one, and and some of that's going to come with experience. Um, and so, uh, you know, he's he's been great in the room, being like, yeah, yeah, I see what you're talking about, and and the the, the the best way for him to continue to grow in that area is to be able to um, see it, uh, and then and then us being able to talk about it and, and what he needs to do better or what he can do differently um, to to avoid those situations. How much of a luxury is it that if it's your QB two, he's obviously has a ton of experience and can run this stuff? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, Ryan, uh, very, very, very happy that Ryan's in the room, um, and and call it a luxury, call it what you will, but uh, not not much not much stress on my end. Some of the guys this week have uh, said that they don't feel this offense has ever really established a style this year. Do you agree with that? And how would you explain why that's the case? Um, uh, being inconsistent, I would say, uh, and for for a number of different reasons. So we got to do a better job of being more consistent. Um, 
in in you know I, I guess I would probably bite back a little bit on the on the not having a style. I think we have a style. Uh, we just got to put ourselves in in you know better situations to be able to play within that style more consistently. How would you describe that style? Um, yeah, uh, a team that that when is when is playing well is a physical team um, that is able to to not only run the football efficiently but also able to to um, use play action um, and and do things that that we have been able to do at times well right so like whether um, you know you're looking at different games different chunks of games whatever it may be uh, there's there are there's there are good uh, displays of the style just not consistent enough for for what we need it to be Farley this week in practice and kind of getting back in the flow of, of things yeah I mean he's been working his butt off to get back out here um, it's good to see him out here with his teammates going through drills doing some things so i um, just happy for him that he's able to get back here out here working with the, with the guys yeah, I mean, I think it's first time out, so we'll see as it progresses here. But it's good to get him back out here. I was excited to see him out here working yesterday. Do you feel like there's a chance he could get back in game? Uh, you're going to have to talk to Braves about that, kind of see where that is at. Um, I'm just happy he's out here working right now with his guys. Did Nico, as far as guys who've been around, just pros who, who kind of take care of their business, where does he kind of uh, rank as, as far as guys like that you've been around? Yeah, I think he's a total pro. Um, comes in, works hard. Works hard throughout the week, understanding the game plan. Works well with the guys around him, um, and then he shows up on Sunday. Ultimately, that's that's the biggest thing with all these guys is what what do you do on Sunday? Um, and he shows up week in and week out. He's productive. Um, he's been a really big asset for us here over the years. Doesn't seem that age is taken a, a, away like a little bit. Where usually a guy that age is. Substituting smarts for something. Yeah, he doesn't seem to have reached that point. Yeah, no. I mean, he's he's still moving pretty well. He's still got the versatility for us. He can play outside, play inside. I think his skill set still really evident on the inside with what he can do. Um, and he's always been an instinctive rusher. He, he's got a good feel for working soft shoulders and getting on edges and and working cross face. So um, all those things continue to show up. Uh, the week as far as looking at their quarterback situation, just assuming it's a Geno. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. And what does he do uh, well that will challenge you? Yeah, I think he's done a good job getting the ball to those guys, right? They got talented, skilled players throughout. Um, does a really good job getting it to him. He's able to extend. We'll see where that's at, obviously, with the groin. But he's been able to extend and make some plays for him. Um, but they're doing a really good job schematically, just finding ways to get those guys the ball. And, and they're able to do stuff with it when they get it. How would you assess uh, McClendon, I think, and, and Bohanna and Coburn? All on the D line there. How how much of a challenge, you know, when you got guys that have played so little or experience to do the, the kind of things that you that you want when you know, whether it's just like a Simmons or a Peter yeah. or anyone like that. Yeah, I mean uh, I think the biggest thing is just the communication aspect as you start adding pieces and it's no, new voices and guys are turning around and they're not really sure where things are coming from and that's the big thing we harped on last week and what we're harping on this week is we just gotta make sure we're communicating, helping the guy next to you. You never know what you're gonna say that might trigger something in the guy next to you, right? Um, so make sure we're thinking out loud out there. Make sure we know. Who cares if they know? Make sure we know. Um, and then ultimately, I think just, just D-line plays, D-line play. I mean, coaches have slight differences on how they coach things from here to there. But fundamentally, for the most part, coaches are going to talk about playing with their hands, playing with better pad level, all the above. So hopefully that continues and we can – and the good thing for us, those guys have played a little bit, right? Like it's not like they're, they haven't played at all. So they, they had some experience, some exposure playing in this league. Um, so I was pleased with what they did last week and hopefully that continues. How would you assess how, how, would you assess how Avery and Garrett held up Sunday and uh, – if Murphy Bunning is unable to go, what are you looking like depth-wise at corner now? Yeah, I thought they did a good job going in there. Um, I mean, that's that's the role of the backup, right? You got to be ready to go when your number's called. Um, I thought T.A. went in there and challenged. Thought he had a pretty pretty good break on the one. Probably doesn't need a foul on that one. He's in good position. I um, think it's tough call. I mean, sometimes they call it, sometimes they don't on the DPI there late. Um, Eric's been consistent. When he's gotten in there, he, he challenges, he's scrappy. He's the old street rat that we always talk about around here, the guy that's going to compete and challenge. And um, you know he's going to be aggressive, right? So hopefully that continues, and we'll kind of see where the week goes with the depth and all that. But everybody's got to be ready to go. You said 
guys, you know, whether it's Eric or, or Roger, when they had opportunities for picks and didn't get them, I, I, they don't jump their case. But what what kind of mess is moving? Yeah, forward? I think we got to attack the ball, right? Like too many times we're letting the ball get into us. We're not we're not attacking the football with our hands. We got to catch it out front. Like you wait, you give those receivers, those tight ends, time to go back and and get back in on the play. So we got to make sure we're attacking the football, and not waiting on it. Um, and we got to be able to come down with those. Those are big time plays that we we weren't able to make, and it ended up costing us. What, what, um, and what was your take on why things kind of went south for for Tart a little bit this year? Uh, I don't really have an opinion. I'm focused on the guys that are here. <laughs> Uh, how, how would you evaluate maybe how Mason's done uh, for you here over the uh, last last Sunday in particular? I thought he did very well. You know, he he caught the punts. Um, the one that he didn't catch was a tough one. It was shorter, um, but he came up, caught the ball square, and he got vertical. Ty is a guy who kind of came in obviously with kind of big responsibility, big shoes to fill. How would you kind of evaluate his his first few weeks there? I thought his first week he did very well, and then last week he was too inconsistent. He's got to be more consistent with the direction of the punt. So, you know, if we want it to go left, we want it to go left, not in the middle of the field. Was Nick, uh, was that more just a technique issue, his miss on the extra point? Or? Just a little quick. I mean, the snap, the hold were good, just a little quick on it. How deflating is that when you score a touchdown and then the point after is missed like that? How deflating it is It is deflating because, you know, that, that point just hangs over your head the whole game. And so it's tough. I mean, you got to make the kicks. I mean, that's what we're paid to do. Do you see much of a difference when maybe a young kicker misses something like that and a veteran kicker, a uh, certain ability to just move past it and kind of bury it? Yeah. I mean, I think because he's got experience. So I think the experience is the, big, the biggest thing. Is there anything you can say to, to, to a kicker, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, in the moment or, or – no, I mean, because he, he's a veteran. He's got his process of how he handles it. So you just let him go through his process. Okay, good. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good. Thank, Thank you. Appreciate it.